Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to a review of what is not only my favourite new San Martin, but I think also their best release to date. And given just how many models they've launched over the last five years, that's quite an accolade when you think about it. San Martin make the best finished, best manufactured watches under 300 US dollars. But up until this point, their best watches have all been uh, borrowed designs, shall we say. They make a mean homage, but some of their originals, well, I'll just leave this here, will I? Thankfully, that now appears to be changing. This is one of a range of NH34 based watches that are not only original, but shock horror also attractive. Now, I'm sure you saw the pop-up. The watch was sent to me by the San Martin official store on AliExpress. I do not have to send it back. I will be keeping this one. I will therefore leave a link in the description of the video to the listing in their store. I like it, but will you like it? Let's flip the camera and find out. Let's start by talking about the price. Normal price on these is just over 300 US dollars, but what do you know, there's a sale on at the moment taking it down under 300 US dollars. There are fairly regular sales on AliExpress and it does make a difference to the price. You know, if you click the link today and there isn't a sale on at the moment, you've probably got a maximum of six weeks to wait until the next one. And can I just say, this watch passed the Mrs. John Moore test. I was wearing it the other day and pointed at it to show her the time and she said, ooh, that's nice. Although in fairness, she was probably referring more to the colour scheme than the subtle design nods towards 1960s skin divers. Either way, it did far better than the usual shrug of the shoulders that 90% of the watches that I show her get these days. Now, I like the colour scheme too. It's a little bit fairer in the way they have put a series of seemingly unrelated colours on the dial together, but somehow they all work okay in combination. And it's an original design from San Martin that doesn't hurt the eyeballs. And if you aren't a fan of this colourful version, there is a more sombre black with the same design and also a pair of world timers based on the same case, the same overall watch. It's not a big watch, so those world timers do look a little busy, but again, they don't look bad and they don't look like anything else. I still think my colourful version is the pick, but I'll leave links to all four. The supplied packaging is this new white box containing a new leatherette tube in green. It's not quite as flashy as the old big plastic tube, but it's certainly easier to store in your cupboard. Let's check the dimensions then. I did make a reference to skin divers. I think you'll see that connection yourself a couple of times over the course of the review. I think in the first instance, that is reflected in the dimensions. This one is 39.5mm in diameter, 12.3mm thick, which is really nice considering the movement choice. 46.8 lug to lug, so a little bit larger there, 20 mil between the lugs, the bracelet tapers all the way down to 16 and back up to 18 at the clasp, and sized up for my seven inch wrist, it tips the scales at 129 grams. That is a lovely set of numbers in my opinion. It certainly has a skin diver water resistance rating at 100 meters, but with a screw down crown, Boxed double dome sapphire covers the dial, and as discussed, this one is Seiko NH34 powered. You can't see it though because of this super boring sterile case back, but this is what it looks like underneath. It's a 24 joule hacking and hand winding automatic with a 40 hour power reserve and a pretty loose set of tolerances from the factory. In my experience, most Seiko NH movements run around plus 10 seconds per day. This one was a little faster coming in at plus 14. They are solid, dependable, reliable movements though. But they are just collar GMTs. So you adjust the home time first, then the GMT hand in one hour increments afterwards. Look, honestly, most people are buying affordable GMTs because they're fun, not because they are international jet setters. So I don't think the style of GMT matters one bit. This one has a bi-directional 24-click bezel, by the way. Very nice action. It sounds good. It feels good. And everything lines up perfectly. As I said in the introduction, I think San Martins are the best made watches for under 300. Have a look at this macro footage of the case and you tell me if you know of a brand that does it better for less. Brushing is super fine. Transitions between finishes are so crisp. The bezel is fantastically machined and the six mil crown is easy to grip and features the hexagon logo etched into it. It's a very skin diver case profile, isn't it? Perhaps a little more downturn from the lugs than was typical in the 60s, but that's a good thing, as are the drilled lugs to help with strap changes. 
The Bees of Rice bracelet is also very skin diver. Seven links with brushed outers and five polished center links. Beads of Rice always has female end links, by the way, for a better fit. End links are solid, it's screws holding the links together, and there's a very nice vintage style taper as mentioned. But there's nothing vintage about the clasp. This is San Martin's new internally adjustable on the fly clasp system. They do two sizes of this one, 18 mil and 20 mil. Now you do have those two screws on the side of the clasp. Yeah, not amazing, but apart from that, it's a cracker. It's well finished, it's easy to use, it offers just over a centimeter of adjustment and it feels like it was built to last. Let's have a look at the dial and hands then. Kind of traditional in some ways with simple baton indices and a straightforward handset, but obviously more modern in other ways, such as the use of color, including a properly color matched date wheel at the six o'clock. Those baton indices are applied with a double at 12, singles everywhere else. The San Martin Hexagon logo features once more and is also applied. Some of these super close-up macros will give you an idea of how nice San Martin's dial finishing is. The printing is always sharp and there are no rough edges to the hands or the indices, which is something you can't always say about bigger brands around this price point. That's one area where they tend to cheap out hand finishing. Six o'clock day always gets a thumbs up, as does the relatively simple dial printing, just GMT in red and then automatic 100 meters slash 330 feet in white beneath it. The red appears most prominently on that GMT hand, and the GMT hand is nice and long, pushing all the way to the edge of the dial because it isn't actually pointing at the dial, it's pointing at the bezel insert, so it needs to be long. Now, of the other hands, the hour and minute hand are perhaps a little underwhelming. They are just simple, flat, high polished silver swords. The second hand, however, is perhaps a little overwhelming. I like the orange color, but it is vast, stretching beyond the minute hand to the very outer edge of the dial and with a hugely long arrowhead counterbalance. Now, if we go right in with my big lens, you can see a lot of printing at the dial perimeter. There's a double set of minute markers, the outer ones printed in a dark green, and beyond that, five minute numerals printed in red to match the GMT hand. Now they're printed on a kind of sepia ring. Again, a little bit of retro here as well in a vintage style font. There are also fifth of a minute markers printed on the turquoise area of the dial, though they could probably have dropped those to keep the whole thing a little bit cleaner. Overall, there is plenty going on, but I'll be honest, some of it you barely notice with the naked eye. A lot of that outer printing is very small. Hands and indices are loom filled, as is the ceramic bezel insert, BGW9 and a decent amount of it. Decent rather than exceptional though. When I turn the speed up on this one, the bezel is the first thing to say goodbye, but the hands and indices are still mostly there at the end of my test. It's okay, but it's not a contender for a Loom Wars win, put it that way. On wrist, the skin diver thing comes through again. It's a slightly flatter case with slightly longer lugs. It doesn't hug the wrist like a cushion case diver or something similar. It does rather sit on top of the wrist if you see what I mean. Looks great though. You can see all those high polished surfaces combined with the box dome sapphire to give a very pleasant effect overall. Now you saw all the different color versions, but I'm very happy with the one they sent me. I do like this color palette. It's fun and I've been adding more color to my personal collection over the last 18 months or so myself. I'd imagine this one will be a good seller for them. The clasp is sizable, but it doesn't overpower or overbalance the watch head. It's still noticeably shorter than a Rolex glide lock style, if that provides a, a bit of a point of reference for you. Pocket shot to finish, I think the blue for the bezel insert helps frame the other colors and helps keep the whole look on the right side of sensible. Maybe they will go crazy with color in the future though, having said that, I guess we'll find out. The clasp means that you wear this one how you want to because of that centimeter of adjustment, but 130 grams means I'm still inclined to wear it quite loose. All right, moans and niggles, it may be their best watch to date, but that doesn't mean to say it's perfect the case back. Now I know we don't look at it every day and this may be okay for a homage, but it's not okay for an original design. They need to put something on there, some branding, a spec sheet, whatever, I don't care, but a sterile case back on a watch like this just looks like a cost cutting exercise because I assume it was one. 
Now, I don't mind the colors. I think they got them pretty much as they should be, but I think maybe the hands need something of a rebalance. The counterbalance on the second hand is enormous because the second hand is enormously long itself. And I think the hour hand and minute hand could both have taken a bit more meat quite easily and not overpowered what is still a relatively small dial. But you know, that's it. These are so good, they're so nicely done. All San Martin ever needed was a half decent designer on board to take all of that manufacturing know-how and apply it to original designs. And I think we are finally beginning to see that in practice. This isn't the only version. As discussed, there are several others, including a well-time bezel. I'm really interested to see where the brand is in 12 or 20 months time, to see whether they are still pumping out lookalikes like they have done, or whether these more original designs begin to get a bit of traction that I think they deserve. For the prices that they charge, you won't find a better made watch elsewhere, and now they have their own designs that they can be proud of. So there you have it, San Martin quality, but now finally with San Martin design. Not perfect, I think the hands need a bit of a rebalance to get the proportions right, but this is definitely a step, if not several steps, in the right direction for them as a brand if they don't want to be known as just a homage brand. Having said that, if you want to see some of their best homages, click here or click here. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I'll see you again in a future video.